Hi, welcome to Chard Review. The show opens up in the bustling New York Times Square, where a police officer spots an unattended duffel bag lying in the middle of the street. He tries to find the owner by questioning the nearby pedestrians, but nobody claims it. Upon approaching the bag, the officer shockingly notices a tag with the words contact the FBI, concerned that it might contain dangerous explosives. The area is immediately evacuated and the bomb squad is called in for investigation. A specialist cautiously approaches the bag and scans it with his device. Finds no evidence of danger. However, during a manual inspection, the bag unexpectedly moves, startling the officer for a moment. Soon after, the bag unzips from the inside, revealing a naked woman adorned with numerous tattoos on her body. Zero she appears to be confused by the situation, but the cops take her into custody anyways. They had no real reason to, but I'm sure they were quick to come up with an excuse. The scene then shifts to a rural house in Kentucky where an armed man is restrained. Multiple women as well as their babies by handcuffing and chaining them amidst the cries of terrified women and infants. A team of FBI officers, led by an agent named Kurt Weller, storms the house. Kurt swiftly devises a plan and uses a detector to locate the criminal's position. He breaks through the identified point, causing the armed man to fall and be apprehended. Following this successful rescue mission, and once he'd uncuffed those babies, Kurt is immediately airlifted by helicopter in order to assist with the case at Times Square upon his arrival a head agent. And Bethany Mayfair briefs Kurt on the tattooed woman whose name is revealed to be Jane Doe. They're soon joined by a doctor who discloses that Jane has been administered a substance called Zeta, interacting protein, or Zip Recruiter, an experimental drug intended for people suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. While the drug is meant to selectively diminish specific memories when taken in small doses, Jane has been exposed to an excess amount of it. 156. The doctor explains that there is a possibility that something might trigger Jane Doe's. Although even he is uncertain as it is a peculiar case, Agent Bethany then takes Kurt to meet Jane and inquires if he recognizes her. Kurt states that he does not know her, but to his surprise, the woman has a tattoo of his name on her back. Kurt has a drinking problem. In the next scene, Kurt directs his team members to search the FBI databases for any matches related to Jane's appearance and her biometrics. When it proves fruitless, she orders them to retrieve the CCTV footage from Times Square so that they can identify the person who left. Duffel bag back in the laboratory area, Agent Patterson carefully examines Jane's body. Oh Ye does, and discovers that all her tattoos are recent. They were actually made within the last week. On analyzing the tattoos further, Kurt deduces that they likely form a map or puzzle that needs to be deciphered. Later on, Kurt enters Jane's chamber and inquires the reason for having his name tattooed on her. Jane reaches out to touch Kurt's hand and feel his face, but she struggles to recollect any information from the past, aware that she has nowhere to go. The FBI arranges for her to stay in a secure residence. That night, Jean gazes at her reflection in the mirror and breaks down in tears, overwhelmed by the fact that she cannot remember anything. The following day, Jane engages in a therapy session with a doctor who presents her with a choice between two drinks. In response, she chooses coffee, which makes her realize that she is a coffee person. As a result, the doctor advises her to continue exploring new experiences that might trigger her memories, while also reassuring her that even if her past remains elusive, she can still discover her true self. She could pick between an apple and a banana. Think of the epiphanies later that day, as Kurt and his team are reviewing some photographs, Jane suddenly enters the room with some news. She is able to identify one of the tattoos on the back of her ears, composed of Chinese characters. I don't even know what the back of my ears look like. She reads the characters aloud, which turned out to be an address and a date. 
The strange thing is that the date is of this very day. Kurt and his group quickly searched for the address and learned that it belongs to a Chinese guy. Aimed to show who is an employee of a multinational corporation, General Electric. Without any delay, the FBI team along with Jane heads on a mission to locate Chow. Upon arrival at the Seattle location, they encountered Chaos roommate who talks only in Chinese. Surprisingly, Jane serves as a translator and relays to the FBI members that the roommate has not seen Xiao since the day before. Following this, the FBI team breaks into Chaos's room and discovers a small laboratory for manufacturing methamphetamine along with traces of explosive chemicals. In addition, they find the laptop protected by a password. One of the officers immediately begins to crack it back. At the FBI headquarters, Agent Patterson and Bethany make a discovery, an additional concealed tattoo depicting a Navy SEAL. This revelation prompts them to speculate whether Jane might have a connection to the Navy SEAL. Bethany believes that Jane could be part of a special operations unit, which would explain why her database yielded no results for her. Meanwhile, as Kurt and the team conducted their investigation, Jane waits outside the room. During this time, she overhears the building's manager mistreating. She tries to ignore it for a while, but when sounds keep getting louder, she springs into action. To everyone's surprise, Jane showcases her remarkable combat skills and subdues two assailants alone. This further proves that Jane is affiliated with the Navy SEALs. Soon after, Kurt witnesses the altercation so he immediately steps in to restrain Jane before escorting her to Chow's room. Turns out that they have found a video on Shaw's computer that requires translation. Once deciphered, the video reveals that Shaw is planning to target a famous politician. Referred to as the mother of exiles within the next three and a half hours, Kurt believes TH at the intended target is Senator Judith Moore, a vocal advocate for immigration and Chinese trade, as she is the only marquee female politician in New York. After a bit of investigation, the FBI realizes that Xiao has powered off his phone and that all of his emails are written in Vijo, which is also known as the devil's language. I'm not sure if that's true, but it sounds offensive. Moments later, they manage to root Xiao's phone and reactivate it, enabling them to trace. Whereabouts with this, Kurt and the team had on a mission to apprehend Xiao while Bethany arranges for additional security to protect Senator Moore. In the next scene, the team locates Chow in the subway and discreetly begins to tail him. However, someone manages to warn him about the followers, prompting him to board a train and move away quickly. Kurt, along with one of his colleagues, goes after him, but their efforts are in vain as Chow cleverly uncouples the train and escapes. He also manages to leave behind a time explosive device. Now, with time running out, Kurt frantically orders the passengers. Move back while he himself grabs the bomb and carries it away from the train. He then removes a portion of the C4 explosive, hoping it will lessen the impact, and just in the nick of time, he hurls the bomb away, averting the potential devastation it would have caused. Cable TV is like comic books but for grown-ups who are dumb as balls. In the aftermath of this incident, Jane reads through chaos, emails, and discovers his profound anguish over his mother's death in a Chinese prison camp. It is revealed that Xiao and his sister had asked the United States government for assistance, but they're pleased when to unanswered. Upon learning this, Kurt realizes that the target is not a politician, but rather the Statue of Liberty, which is the most iconic tourist destination in the country. Armed with this newfound knowledge, the FBI team rushes to the landmark. Once they arrive, Jane expresses her desire to contribute and assist the team. Kurt obliges and gives her a bulletproof vest. As the team moves inside the Statue of Liberty, Kurt and Jane come across a man whom they initially assumed to be a ranger. Kurt instructs him to walk out, as the location needs to be evacuated, but the man is none other than Chow, who suddenly turns around and shoots Jane in the arm before making his escape upstairs. 
Determined to end this once and for all, Kurt goes after him and the two eventually come face to face. They start fighting and at one point Chow gains the upper hand and prepares to execute Kurt, but right then Jane arrives at the scene and holds Chow at gunpoint. The latter tries to manipulate her, but she doesn't listen and shoots him in the arm, freeing Kurt from his captor's clutches. At the same time, Jane experiences a flashback. A black and white memory depicting her with long hair, training in marksmanship alongside an unidentified bearded man in a woodland setting. Startled by the sudden recollection that she used to be colorblind, Jane confides in Kurt, revealing that she remembers something significant, leading to an awkward embrace between the two. Later on at the FBI headquarters, Kurt addresses the team, emphasizing that Jane possesses the skills of a seasoned professional, including language proficiency, combat abilities, and exceptional marksmanship. He highlights the fact that one of her tattoos played a crucial role in saving the lives of numerous individuals. After enduring these events, Kurt deduces that the precinct can't afford her and that the mastermind behind all this likes playing games and it is just the beginning. Bethany then advises everyone to rest as they will reconvene the following day for further investigation and analysis. After the departure of the team, Bethany begins examining a top-secret file that contains a few uncensored details, including her own name. At the top of the file, she discovers a case number that happens to correspond to one of Jane's tattoos. On the other hand, Kurt pays a visit to Jane's residence to ensure that she's coping well. When he notices that she is distressed, he gives her a warm hug, assuring her that everything will eventually be all right. Elsewhere, Chow is shown recuperating at a hospital following his arm surgery. A few moments later, a bearded man from Jane's flashback enters the room disguised as a doctor. Upon seeing him, Chow expresses his belief that everything happened the way it was supposed to, but the bearded man doesn't agree. He asserts that Chow is meant to sacrifice himself for his sister. Following this, the bearded man murders Chow and walks away. In the final scene, we see another flashback that depicts the same bearded man explaining the concept of Zip to Jane, explaining that upon being injected with it, she would lose all of her memories. Surprisingly, Jane agrees to administer the drug to herself, revealing that it was her own decision. She knew that she was going to lose her memories. What's Michael Schofield's excuse? Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. Thank you for watching.